When I was in high school in the late 1980s, the computers we used were the IBM PS2. But not the good PS2s, no. They didn't have fancy 386 processors or anything like that. They had 8086 processors and 640K of RAM. They were basically beefed up IBM PCs using the same tech from almost a decade earlier. So when we wanted to display a high resolution image, the best we could get was black and white. Not grayscale, just black and white, nothing else. At 640 by 480. Well, one day I decided I wanted to take a grayscale image that I had and display it. Previously, I had learned about dithering, which is a technique to simulate intermediate shades between the colors you that you have by putting lighter and darker pixels next to each other. I didn't do anything really sophisticated though. All I did was make the probability of a pixel being white equal to its gray level. So for example, if I had a 50% gray pixel, what I did was I made the a, a have a 50% chance of being white, otherwise it would be black. Now this isn't a great way of doing dithering, but for illustration purposes this will serve our needs just fine right now. So here's a picture of a toucan, where in the image on the right, gray levels have been converted directly to probabilities. But this doesn't look right, does it? The image looks washed out, with the middle shades being too light. What's going on here? What's going wrong? Well, it turns out that the human eye does not have a linear response to light intensity. So to oversimplify this a lot, if you quadruple the amount of light, it only looks about twice as bright to the human eye. In other words, the perceived brightness is roughly the square root of the physical light intensity. Now, in reality, the response of the human eye to light intensity is a lot more complicated than this, but this oversimplification will do okay for scenarios like what we're discussing here. So let's try this again. This time, the probability of a pixel being white is the square root of the desired intensity. So we go from this, where the middle grays look washed out, to this, where the dithered image approximates the original a lot better. Now, I know that both these black and white images look pretty terrible because, as I mentioned, there are better ways to perform dithering. But nevertheless, if you back away from your computer screen and squint your eyes real hard, this is an improvement. Now, a common way to approximate the nonlinearity in what we'll call the luminosity transfer function for eyes and monitor devices is a geometric function. Here, I've represented the perceptually linear gray level with a B and the physical luminance with L. And we'll relate them by setting one of them to a constant power that we symbolize with the Greek letter gamma. Now, if you've ever adjusted the gamma setting for your graphics card to make, for example, a game look brighter, you'll be somewhat familiar with this. In these graphs, the gamma is two. Although a value of 2.2 is commonly used because it yields a function that is a bit closer to the response curve of the human eye. So here we see the whole process. On the left, we have digital image, the computer image in your computer memory, and it contains gray levels that are stored in a perceptually linear fashion. The monitor roughly squares the value of its input signal when converting it to light, and then your eye reverses the process by roughly taking the square root and then an effect is perceptually linear. So that's the story of gamma in a nutshell. However, before I go, a related thing I'd like to talk about is anti-aliasing and how accounting for the nonlinear response of your eye can improve the appearance of anti-aliasing. So let's say we want to draw a line. If all we have are black and white pixels, then the best we can do is a stair-step pattern like what you see here. Here we have a line and a zoomed in section of it. Now, anti-aliasing is when we smooth out the edges using gray pixels. So instead of stepping directly from black to white, we will transition smoothly through gray levels. So let's try that for this line. Here in the middle, what I've done is I've, is I've plotted a white pixel where the line I want to draw lands exactly on a discrete pixel position and a black pixel if the line doesn't pass through that pixel location at all. But 
if where I want to draw a part of the line lands in between two pixels on the physical display, I will fill in two gray pixel values instead. This is better. But if you look really closely, the line has sort of a rope-like pattern to it. So what's going on with that? The first thing you should notice is that the two circled pixels are just too dark. When the line passed exactly halfway in between two pixels, what I did was I lit up the two neighboring pixels by 50%, which sounds sensible, right? But for a typical computer monitor, it turns out that each of those 50% pixels emits only about 20% as much light as a white pixel. So if you add them up, the line's midpoint is only emitting about 40% as much light as it should be, which you will perceive as around 66% of the desired gray level. So what we want to do is make two pixels that are next to each other add up to the same amount of light as one white pixel. So here's the formula that we need for that specific case of the midpoint of the line. So we're going to start with the desired perceptual gray level, B1, which is white. So in this case, it's a 1. Then we're going to raise it to the power of gamma. I use 2.2 in this case. Now, now we're in luminance space representing physical light intensity. So what we've done is we've converted from perceptually linear to physically linear. Next, we're going to scale it. So for this special case of right in the middle of the line, we're going to scale by half. Because what we want to do is put two pixels of the same gray level together to add up to the same amount of light as one white pixel. Finally, we have to convert back to the perceptually linear pixel value, which we do by raising to the power of 1 over gamma. So B2 is the gray level we need to store in two adjacent pixels in graphics memory. Here I've plugged in the numbers and done the math. And for the, mid, the line midpoint, the result is about 73%. So if we put two pixels next to each other that are perceptually 73% as bright as a white pixel, then together they will add up to look about like one white pixel. And this is the end result where the rope-like pattern is about as diminished as we can make it for the resolution of the display. Thanks for watching.